you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. I'm glad I could make it as well. Various trains and buses and small canoe. Um, <laughs> had that in the back pocket. Um, today I would like to talk to you about a project which is currently being delivered in Norwich. Uh, as, as Lucy said, the refurbishment of the Norman Keep and the complete renovation of the entrance into Norwich Castle Museum and Art Gallery. Um, this is the most extensive capital works project at the museum for the last 20 years and requires a closure of portions of the site, including the principal entrance for about 18 months. Uh, during that time, the rest of the museum will remain open uh, as much as possible, functional and operating as normal. The outcome of these works will be to open up some parts of the castle which have been cut off by earlier additions to refocus attention on the keep itself, uh, which is often lost due to the current layout of the museum entrance, and provide increased access across the medieval building. Uh, for the first time, all visitors will be able to access all different parts of the Norman structure, including the battlements. Press the button here. There we are. There it is. Uh, Norwich, of course, is a city known for its extensive surviving medieval infrastructure. The cathedral in close, the street layouts, and a huge amount of flint-walled churches all keep the medieval past uh, firmly in the city's present identity. Uh, but while it physically sits dominant in the landscape, Norwich Castle, you can see, see the keep there, uh, is not already always directly associated with the medieval past. The changes to its immediate surroundings, the exteriors, something seems to create a disconnect uh, with its original role and status in Norwich and East Anglia. As someone said to me recently, uh, being in the pub and not knowing my occupation at the time, it isn't a real castle like those ones in Wales. <laughs> The Gateway to Medieval England project presents an opportunity to consider, develop, and implement new approaches to display and interpretation, which will convey both the history and the standing of the Norman Castle, and showcase the extensive medieval collections which are held by the Norfolk Museum Service. Norwich Castle first emerges uh, in the 11th century, Probably around 1067, William I orders the construction of a royal castle in the town, which involved the creation of a Mott and Bailey-styled uh, structure with an associated defensive ditch. At this age, the wooden palisade enclosure is thought to have encompassed about 15.4 acres, and a Doomsday Book indicates that 98 houses in the Anglo-Saxon town were destroyed to make way for the new mound and associated structures. Uh, during the rebellion of the Earls in 1075, the castle was besieged by Archbishop Lanfranc uh, with every kind of engine of war, and the castle was brought back into royal control. Around 1094, an extensive building project was initiated by William II to construct a stone keep on top of the mound. Uh, work was undertaken to increase the size uh, of the mound, and this is estimated to have accumulated of 200 persons, 360 days to complete. Uh, this gives an indication of the scale of that project and the vet investment involved. Uh, following the death of William II, Henry I continues the project, commissioning an even more elaborate uh, architectural scheme and decorating the facade of the keep with extensive blind arcading following the patterns of numerical and geometric sequencing. The keeps most likely competed in 1121, where Henry spends Christmas there. Uh, from the archaeological evidence, uh, the interiors were considerable in their scope, uh, with high status chambers, an extensive set of garter robes, uh, were actually potentially the most important 12th century toilets in all of Britain, uh, and an extensive uh, kitchen inside the keep itself, adjacent to the hall, uh, and a really interesting feature because it wasn't part of the original design and, of course, is a terrible, terrible fire hazard. Um, overall, Norwich Castle consisted of the keep, the immediate bailey around, <clears throat> several other baileys, a ditch here, and an entire castle fee covering over 23 acres. Um, it was subject to two sieges, 
1174 and 1216. Um, and then in the 13th century, though it's progressively subject to repair, um, it's rarely visited by monarchs and falls into dereliction. Uh, around 1300, it's given over to acting as the county jail for the local and state prisoners with the shire courts within that internal bailey up there. Um, but while this is maintained, you can see the rest of the outer sets of the structure are robbed for building materials and the ex existing ditches uh, variously filled up with detritus. Over the 17th and 18th century, the keep itself continues to fall into disrepair with the roof uh, and interior floors being demolished to create an open yard. Subsequent development of the jail saw the insertion of U-shaped cells, and you can see this in here, so you can actually see the crenellations above there, so this is the interior of the keep. Um, the rest of the castle is essentially removed uh, and new prison structures are created. In the 1830s, the whole of the facade is actually refaced, um, which gives it that appearance that you saw on that first slide. Um, while some elements were altered, many of the original outlines and blind arcading was maintained or at least repeated appropriately. So we have some sense, though the battlements and the crenellations are completely off. Um, but these uh, and other additions, including uh, the inclusion of a radial prison plan, were not enough, and by the 1880s, the jail was inadequate for its needs. The prison was removed, and in 1889, they began turning the keep into a museum. Um, though desirous of recreating most of the medieval internal layout, the original plans by the architect, Edward Boardman, were rejected by the committee in charge. Instead, a floor was inserted just above the <clears throat> medieval fabric at the ground level, and a gallery was created around the perimeter at the level of the original principal floor. Uh, Baldwin also created this new arcade, which actually sits on the original location of the spine wall, um, and recreated the roof based off the evidence that they were able to, to find there. By 1894, the collections are moved into the refurbished keep uh, and prison spaces, and the museum is opened with the royal visit that year. Um, further additions and alterations continue in the 20th century with the external uh, eastern and northern face, this and this here, of the keep uh, being boxed in by the construction of the central rotunda in 1969. Uh, between 1999 and 2001, the whole of Norwich Castle Museum underwent an extensive refurbishment, including the re-display of objects from the medieval collection on the ground floor of that keep. So it didn't quite look like this, but similar-ish. Uh, and around the, the upper Victorian gallery, there's a great shot and the other one where you can actually see a canoe, not the one that I used. Um, the advent of the current project. Um, the concept of refurbishing the Norman Keep had existed for several years ahead of the actual manifestation of this project. Uh, it could be said that the original vision of the Victorian architect was to recreate these medieval interiors more accurately, but as I said, the board rejected the approach on financial grounds. More recently, on the back of the Norman Connections project in 2008 to 2014, uh, which itself looked to advance understanding and appreciation of Anglo-Norman castles, both here and in Normandy, uh, initial consultation was actually undertaken. Uh, this highlighted the feeling that the keep, I'll go back to this, uh, was Norwich Castle's most important exhibit and a desire to see more of its medieval stories, but that you didn't really get a sense that it was a castle when you came into this interior. In advance of the first round of the HLF, as it was then, application, further consultation was undertaken with staff, stakeholders, and the general public. The findings were very similar to the results received over the past seven years, um, with the historic elements of the keep being part that was lacking from visitors' experience at the museum, especially as they've been taken in by that overwhelming structure as they approached the building. That 
first slide is what you see when you're coming up, and then when you come in, you actually lose it because you enter into a sort of low ceiling 1960s corridor. You're not quite sure where to go to find the castle. Um, other elements that were highlighted from the consultation was a want to have the space be brought to life uh, and engage with historical characters to create an immersive experience, to have imaginative design. Following the success of the first round bid, all of these pieces of feedback have been considered and influenced the development of the project and the approach to the interpretation. Over the subsequent years of the development phase, um, considerable further consultation uh, was undertaken in order to test and trial the approaches which have been considered for the redisplays. We've engaged with over uh, a thousand individuals through surveys, online workshops, focus groups, comment cards, to really try to get a sense of what people wanted out of their castle museum and what they had felt was missing uh, from previous visits. Uh, and in 2018, the NLHF Stage 2 funding uh, was awarded, and we've moved into the delivery phase of transforming Norwich Castle. Um, as I mentioned, one of the most significant points raised from the consultation and observations was that visitors had a difficulty understanding the medieval layout and life of the keep as a castle and palace due to the Victorian architecture. Uh, so one of the central principles of the whole project is to recreate these medieval interiors. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this involves the reinstatement of the medieval principal floor, essentially filling in the void around the Victorian gallery, and then creating as much as possible the internal room divisions and furnishing these spaces. This will enable the principal floor to contain a full, in full historical dimension the Great Hall, the kitchen, the King's bedchamber, the chapel, and some of the mezzanine uh, area above, essentially all of the high status spaces. Uh, luckily, as I mentioned, the garter robes have remained broadly intact, so there's no problems there. Um, the Great Hall will, and this is sort of some of the sample material that we've been working out uh, for some of the earlier stages uh, with the bids, but showing again how these new rooms, which Again, you used to just have a small perimeter rolling around. It will now be able to be explored. This here is that central arcade. The Great Hall has a dais and thrones with king, for the king and queen, textile canopy, banners, wall hangings, tables, benches, and a central hearth. Uh, it looks to highlight the multifunctional nature of the hall. Uh, not just for feasting, but also for the conducting of business, the dispensing of justice and judgment, as well as utilizing the size and the grandeur to convey a sense of power, underpinning the royal authority that was embedded there. The kitchens and the garderobe area allow for a better understanding of the service elements which supported the high status spaces, as well as the practical elements of castle life and will contain many sensory components to help highlight the realities of the medieval period. I'll um, let your imaginations go with that one. Uh, the King's Chamber, which is down here, is another, ex another space which the project provides a new opportunity for extensive interpretation and engagement. Uh, in the current layout, only a small area, about that amount of space, um, is accessible and the rest is, is hanging in the void. The new scheme will recreate walls and the layout and contain the trappings of the high status chamber, including a bed, chairs, writing desks, gaming tables. Um, it also highlights the location of the well. This is actually a well right there, um, which is thought to have extended all the way up through the structure from, from being dug in the mound itself. Again, the role of power is the key message for the visitors here, along with the multi-use of the chamber. It wasn't just a bedroom in the modern sense. Now, all of the detailed textiles I have mentioned throughout the historical space are actually being made by a group of volunteers at Norwich Castle. It will work now. Slide. No. No, it doesn't want to work. No. Oh. There we are. That'll do. Um, 
To date, they've been working on a project called the Norwich Tapestry, which is a creation of a textile in the style of the Bayou Tapestry. Uh, and it tells the story of the development of Norwich Castle and Herod the Wake. Um, here they are working on their actual portions of the tapestry and using the, the Bayou stitch so it's done in the accurate historical manner, having, as you can see, constantly reviewing the styles of the tapestry, how they're pulling together the different attributes. It's, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, this will actually sit within the King's Chamber and wrap itself around the, the walls um, and then can be explored in more detail with a digital touchscreen that we've developed to be embedded into one of the recreated uh, pieces of historic furniture. And that will allow you to actually see a bit more detailed examination of the piece um, understand the text and usefully translate it from, from the Latin there, because uh, yes, there's Herod, there he is. Um, and then understand a little bit more as well some of the characters. Um, so you can see Herod there with his distinctive yellow beard, and then he's on his pony there getting married. Um, in order to recreate these spaces with the most historical accuracy possible, we've been working with a academic advisory boards to guide the new layouts. You can see in previous interpretations where there are areas of, of discrepancy of, of how this structure actually existed. Um, though some evidence survived from the post-medieval period, there was more uncovered during the Victorian restorations, and there are these outstanding questions of how the space is laid out. And through the research of the academic advisory board, they're able to give us approaches on where we should be putting elements in, how we should be rebuilding these spaces, um, and so that we can be as confident as we can be for understanding the interior workings of the castle. In areas where we don't know, we are hoping to actually engage visitors with that question and acknowledge this ambiguity. So it gives the castle a sense of life. It's not just stasis. It's not a place where we've answered all the questions. There's lots of uh, outstanding ones remaining. It also uh, allows us to utilize those certain spaces for uh, structural requirements of access and circulation. So stairs, lift shaft, dry risers, and the ever important storage. Um, this will allow us for maximum, maximum impact and minimal modern elements, if you will, within the high status spaces, um, which can be more confidently reconstructed. Uh, the other central element of the whole project, and I think one that really touches very closely on the theme of the conference today, is the creation of a new gallery which explores the medieval period from the 11th to the 16th century. This is located on the current uh, ground floor of the keep. Um, Norwich Museum Service maintains a nationally designated archaeological collection uh, a discipline which has been principal collecting area since the early 19th century. Antiquarian collections have contributed important medieval objects to the NMS holdings, as well as excavation archives, and since the 1970s, increasingly large amounts of metal detected finds. As well as traditional archaeology, there are extensive medieval collections in the fine art and decorative arts department, and an active ambition across the service to continue to collect important works from the Middle Ages. With all of this potential material available, a core motivation has always been to create a new tailored display space to show these collections in an interdisciplinary chronological context rather than solely approaching them from a single discipline narrative. Norwich Castle Museum has also been working with the British Museum on the development of the gallery and this has resulted in the new space being established as a British Museum partnership gallery. Um, this will allow a number of objects to come to us on loan and support the gallery in exploring various narratives, complementing and working in tandem with the existing NMS collections. This situation left the project with uh, an embarrassment, if you will, of potential options and approaches on how to present, orientate, uh, and interpret these wide-ranging collections. Uh, another key question in developing the approach revolved around chronology and geography. Uh, fortunately, the museum already has a gallery dedicated to the medieval period, or the early medieval period, I should say, running up to about the Norman Conquest. So that provided a very nice chronological bookend for the gallery that we're looking to build. 
um, a key message that we've always wanted to get across to the visitors is the importance of Norwich uh, as the second city, if you will, in England during the Middle Ages. However, to focus the display specifically on the history of medieval Norwich, uh, which would naturally lean towards excavated and archaeological collections, uh, risked excluding some of the most impressive objects which have their origins in antiquarian and art holdings. So, for instance, this piece here or, or this piece here, wonderful medieval objects, but not ones that are necessarily linked directly to Norwich or even Norfolk in some cases. The approach that was subsequently developed in conjunction with the curators at the British Museum was to organize the gallery space thematically um, in a way to reflect contemporary understandings of the structure of the wider medieval society, uh, focusing on, but not exclusively, uh, to England. And while utilizing the large amount of potential material to make an object-rich display capable of highlighting and demonstrating the subtleties and complexities that underpin the period. The gallery is divided into three themes following Elfric of Ensham's commentary on the medieval world. Well, you can't really see it very well because of the colors, but those who fight, those who work, and those who pray. Um, and then you can see just from this some of the sub-themes uh, that are kicking around within the different uh, broad themes. You have areas like core interpretation of Christianity, rites and rituals of the church, saints, Pilgrim's uh, expression of personal and domestic piety, all sitting under those who pray, uh, and then walking over to other elements like fashion and dress of the non-nobles, domestic life, daily work. I mean, the list is, is pretty extensive at this stage. Um, each of the themes are broadly given about a third of the gallery, um, and we're taking the approach of using internal case divisions sorry, to allow for multiple sub-themes to sit in singular larger units. Um, as such a division is not binary in actual medieval society, the gallery works to reflect this through the physical proximity of specific narratives uh, and objects within the cases. Um, so we're aiming to actually promote the connections between different ideas and subjects across the themes through how they're, they're spaced and located in the gallery itself. Uh, for instance, the objects which explore um, international trade, um, which was conducted in Norwich and coming through Norwich, uh, in the those who work section, so that down there, is actually placed adjacent to the area exploring the development of science uh, and production in the medieval worlds and the contacts with not just continental Europe, for instance, the printing press, but also the Islamic world in Spain and the Mediterranean. Um, though subtle, it's hoped that these juxtapositions will help create a more cohesive exchange between the applied taxonomical themes and the objects on display and help convey the complexities of medieval society, it's not black and white, of course, to the visitors without compromising that overarching three-theme framework. Um, where possible, we're also hoping to highlight chronological change in the development of elements and themes without uh, compromising the, the layout. So this is in order to avoid the impression that this, there was social status, if you will, over the uh, five centuries covered. Um, a good example of this being the development of noble fashion. And again, this is led as much as possible by the collections that we have. Furthermore, oh, the layout of themes enables the NMS collections to use specific case studies in order to explore wider subjects and trends that emerged on a national and international levels. The, yes, it's not very clear, but there are little circles around these. Um, one of the notable points from the earlier mentioned feedback we received was the desire to have the past brought to life through actual historical figures and characters um, set within the themes, the individuals can be highlighted through their association to objects uh, and tangible elements and increase the actual engagement we're hoping. So just some of the ideas and areas where we might be able to move forward. The thematic approach also enables us to work very closely with community groups when developing the interpretation and the narratives. For instance, we're working with the local Jewish community on 
interpreting the stories around the Jewish population in Norwich and their expulsion in 1290. An advantage of the thematic approach is that this part can be holding contemporary reflections and underpin the continued relevance and impact of the medieval world on society today. Uh, one of the outcomes, for instance, will be the recording of the of Meyer of Norwich, a member of that 13th century Jewish community, um, in the original medieval Hebrew by one of the local rabbis, and also contain reflection of the present community's feelings about that poetry. Yeah, mindful of my own time, so I'll skip ahead really quickly. Um, the ground floor uh, is divided into three spaces based essentially on the surviving medieval archaeology. We have a workshop space here, which is one of our key learning and engagement areas. Um, and then to the area over here, we have our under five section called the Those Who Play, um, just to link on those themes. This draws on the physical environment itself. Um, both of these do, making use of the fact of the exposed archaeological remains, the well shaft actually still existing here, the, the flint walls here, in order that you have, certainly in the case of the, those who play, it's a child-led learning approach um, to engaging with the topics that are presented down there, which actually reflect the material that's explored on the British Museum Gallery and in the principal floor. Um, in this way, the learning space, both in the, um, for the under fives and actually for the workshop space, act as launch points. They're not getting stuck into a corner. They're actually using that and then going on to explore, hopefully, the rest of the gallery. The north compartment, I'll just quickly move on to this, is another area we've actually exposed. We're going to take out the floor here and go all the way up. So you will see the entirety of what was originally the, the layout. You can see just there, there's a little pier base um, which has been exposed. And this gives us a chance to recreate it with a, a light installation. So the lights will help us recreate the piers. Uh, in this whole area, it's actually core archeology. span And we're trying to use that as a digital element. So we have room for uh, virtual reality, exploring elements of the archeology span and its development both in the castle and in Norwich more widely, an area of a rolling essentially documentary screen where content can be updated not only by ourselves but working in community groups. So it's one of the areas we're working with our youth networks to see if they can develop partnership and reflections on the archaeology itself. This whole project, the three tiers if you will, the raw archaeology, the objects that we discover and then our reinterpretation in the context provides an opportunity for Norwich Castle to be put on the map in many ways as a key institution for exploring and learning about the medieval world. Thank you. <laughs>